Hi, and welcome to my playhouse. And today I've sneaked my way into Eros ECS and um, they have Lenovo servers. So I'm gonna very unnoticeable sneak my way down to the warehouse and see what's on the shelf that I can get out of right, here. So let's go see if we can pick ourselves a server. I already see some boxes over here. Well, I think the best thing is probably far, far, oh, we have to avoid him. Servers here. That one. Hmm. Oh, that one is the bigger one. Let's get that one. We got though we have something. Ah, what is this? This is also Lenovo parts and a power supply. Thank you very much. We'll just help ourselves. Never mind me. Oh dude, that was so embarrassing. I was um, yeah, visiting Eros ECS to pick up my new server and we were just, I was gonna film something and we got this funny idea that I should steal it off their shelves. And guess which idiot forgot to put an SD card in his camera? Yeah, that would be this idiot. So uh, yeah, that was on my phone. That was, uh, oh crap, that was bad. I got a new server. This server has kind of a backstory to it, so um, story time. I ordered a server on Amazon. It was a decent price, that server. Actually, it was like 500 euros cheaper than the same model everywhere else. So uh, I thought, oh, order. And um, yeah, it's ordered, it's on its way. It's And then the company came back and said, oh, we can't get that. You can get the little brother or you can cancel your order. So clearly the price was not right. Um, here is that company. Um, I really do hope that their piece of bread with nice strawberry jam falls upside down on a dirty sandy rock. But I reached out to my good friend at Eros ECS and asked what he could do. And I got this server asset at an even better price. So um, I kind of got this for the same price as the other one, uh, but this is a bigger model. And I actually have numbers here. The normal price for this would be $2,550 or 22.80 euros. And I got this for just $1,950, which is then 1,740 euros. It's 13,000 Danish crowns, so much easier. But I even got some accessories to it there over there. And um, I have to really thank my patrons for this server because they have financed a bigger part of it. I thought that I was gonna be able to finance this server by selling these desulfator kits that, well, they're still on sale because I didn't sell enough of them. I sold about 20 of them and that brought in about 500 euros-ish. So um, yeah, thank you if you did buy a diesel fader. It also helped a lot, but patrons, thank you very much. So um, today we are gonna be um, unboxing this, my new Lenovo SR650. This server is, well, I have already done a couple of videos on it because, well, it's the flagship in this 2U size server from Lenovo and I have made sure that I've gotten my hands on them, but now I have my own. It's really weird that Lenovo don't see the benefit of just giving this to me. Just think of the views that this server could have had for the last one and a half years, just putting it out there. But let's unbox it and see what we got. First thing I will say about the box is that it's way too big. I don't understand why these boxes have to be this big because there is a small server inside. Yes, of course, it has to be protectively shipped and everything. But just think of a pallet. You could stuff twice as many servers on there if you didn't put them in that bigger box. So yeah, that's just a thought that I want to bring out there as well. So on the side of the box, there is a label that tells you what this is. And the most important thing is this number up here. 
that's the model of the server in here this is a standard model for Lenovo and if you go to the website uh, Lenovo Press you will be able to find this model and you'll be able to see what came with that model it also says a little bit up here it says that this is a think system SR650 there's the processor it's the 4210 uh, the newest generation of Intel scalable processors and it comes with 16 gigs of RAM so there's an Intel inside danger and just to show you that this is Lenovo press and they have of course the Lenovo think system SR650 this is all the information that you're probably ever gonna need to know about this server and over here um, it has models right there and if we click that there's different countries and different standards but I am in Europe so we have a Europe section down here there and I have marked my server so it comes with all of that I can see what what's in it and there's a rate controller there's room for eight hard drives there is yeah one power supply so yeah this is a really good tool for helping you with your Lenovo servers from the kitchen we introduces the kitchen knife there it's open I am not expecting that much it's a server it, um, it's a standard server it doesn't come with a lot of extra in here I do have a little bit of extra from uh, Eros but as you see it comes with rails these are the rack rails for mounting it in the data center in the racks so that's nice um, it doesn't come with the cable management arm if you want the cable management arm you have to make sure to order that when you order the new server they're not very expensive they don't put them in as a standard here is another box uh, I am expecting the power cable and I'm right power cable one piece of paper um, usually it's just secure safety stuff in multiple languages and a very good decent power cable thank you it's for data center use it's not for regular clocks awesome and then we have this kind of wasteful packaging where you could fit two servers in this box without any problem whatsoever or yeah maybe I shouldn't bitch about that let's just call it it's well wrapped oh there's a there's a security sticker in here. Oh, almost got that I'll lift this up and we will have a better look at it so I got it out of the box I'm gonna remove the plastic here I have it on a rock here um, blanket so that it doesn't scratch my table oh the rock doesn't go around very nice rock I stole this from my mom when I moved out back in the time <clears throat> There is not a lot of stuff on these servers. There are these release um, handles. When it's in the rack, you, you take this out on each side. There is also a screw that you can use to fasten the server if you don't want people to just go in the data center and pull it out. Well, they have to bring a screwdriver. Then there is hot drives, and these are just empty air bufflers. But in this server, there is actually a backplane and behind here so if we take these out you'll be able to see that backplane and that is a better thing with this model that I got compared to the very cheap model that I started looking at it has a backplane and it has a rate controller so I can actually do something with this the other one I would have to go and get a backplane and rate controller and whatever I wanted because the server comes this could be a compute note and for a compute node, well, you can boot it off the network, fiber channel SAN or just a boot device. You can boot it off a USB stick if you wanted to. But this actually has room for hard drives. The next bay over here, well, there's nothing. So um, if you want to expand this, well, you have to put in another backplane. And I kind of like doing that. So um, we might do that along the way. It's very similar to other models that we have had good looks at 
hard drives go in here. And I do believe that it's the same tray as used in the awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5. So moving along the way over here in the middle, there is this strip that you can pull out and there is the MAC address and serial number and well it's it's meant so that you can add more data if you want some data to um, to be available when you walk by your server in the data center well use this strip and and put it on there front or back because it's not a good idea to put strips on the front of the server because they very carefully engineer the airflow of these servers. This is not just random stuff. They think about every hole, every gap and stuff that is on the front of a server like that. Um, if we look at these, it's, it's not just a filler. There is a metal grid in there to make sure that the airflow through this filler is just exactly right. To have this in should be the same as having it full of hard drives so it will pull the same amount of air through so if we put hard drives in all of these well all the air is not just gonna go through here if that was just a big hole well all the air would just piss through there and we wouldn't get our drives cooled over here so they have thought about that okay then we go over to this side where it becomes a little bit interesting we have a power button here and we have an id button and this is the one that lights up blue on the back of the server when we pushes this normally it's called the light tower often they have had a little picture of a light tower on that if you have 21 of these servers in a rack and number six is messing up well you can press this and number six will also be lighting up blue on the back so you can see which server it is that might have a bad network connection or whatever uh, maybe it's, it's just totally dead you want to go around the back and remove all the cables well it could be important to remove the cables on the right server so uh, yeah you press that lights up blue on the back you go around the back remove the cable and pull it out of the rack if you don't have the cable management arm that is led for the network connection and we have an led that lights up orange i believe when if there's something wrong we have some holes here i'm not sure that might be ambient temperature or something all the chinese are listening in one of the two usb two ports and the release thingy together with that we have the model number of this server and we have the serial number important let's see the back or should we see the sides first so this server is about 18 kilograms it's not that heavy which is nice when you're mounting it and Lenovo slash IBM is still using these slots here which is well they're really cool because they don't take up any space on the server they it's a bit difficult to get the server down in the rack rails it does take some practice to do that sometimes you're lucky sometimes you have to do it a couple of times and that is where this 18 kilograms becomes important because when you're trying this for the third time it has become bloody heavy so moving around the back there we are there isn't much to see around here for the time being we're gonna sort of fix that at some point over here we have room for a network connection the server doesn't come with any network connections whatsoever if you notice that well you can't right now but we can just scroll through here and we see nothing but this is where you put in the lom lan on motherboard it's for the network module um, because data center uses different network models some uses copper some uses fiber some uses 1 gigabit connections and some uses 10 gigabit and now there is also 25 40 and 100 connections available instead of having all those different connections well when you need the server you also order the network card and the LOM modules here are usually pretty inexpensive then we have the ID so one of these holes over here is where the blue light comes out and then we have the management port for the um, well they changed the name again uh, it used to be the IMM now they are trying to change the name to XCC and I'm not a big fan of all these changing names I must admit in that regard Hewlett Packard is way ahead of them it has been called the ILO adapter forever and ever and I don't have to think about that. On IBM slash Lenovo servers, it has been the 
AMM, it has been the RSA, it has been the RSA2, it has been the IMM, it has now been the XCC. Make up your blotchy mind, would you? Then we have the VGA connection. Thank you very much, it's awesome to have that. I think you should start to put in something else as well. Suddenly we won't be able to find a screen with a VGA connection anymore. I think a VGA connection and an HDMI would do nicely. Maybe a mini HDMI. I'm sure you could find the space for it. Then we have a PCI Express port, which becomes important when we get into the server. We then have a couple of USB connections. It's not as if there's a lot of connections back here. Um, they could have fitted more. I would have liked to see more connections back here. Why not use the space? Then over here we have the power supply and there's room for one more. But let's have the power supply out and see that. It's a standard size power supply. These are very regular. Um, it's very awesome that they have standardized these power supplies across, well, all the models often. So you don't have to have a ton of different power supplies laying around for your different servers. You can kind of just have one for most of your models. So that is cool there. And there's room for another one. And we kind of see they have put some piece of plastic in here. See that? They don't want the air to piss out that way because then it won't cool anything. And there is a fan on the power supply. These power supplies are so compact inside that the air would not choose to go through the power supply if they didn't put an active fan on there. That would just be this big hole and even these two holes uh, for your fingers to pull this out would, would mess up the airflow. So yeah, they think about everything, don't they? So room for that. There is room for up to six PCI Express ports here and they are PCI Express E3, third generation. Fourth generation is on its way, but as this server is already almost two years old, well, it doesn't have that. Top of the server, we have a very informative information thinking about what everything is. We have a motherboard schematic here with a lot of numbers, with a lot of what different stuff is. We have the power supply over here uh, that has three LEDs. It has one for AC, DC and error. It has three LEDs and they will light up. Green, green, probably nothing if everything is good. Then we have how to put in the rig controller. We have what everything is on the back of the server. We have how to install the LOM adapter. And we have how to install the M.2 in here. And I actually have one of those that uh, we are also gonna be looking at. It's this thing. It's a tiny little boot device. And on the very front, here is how to actually mount the server in the rack and also how to get it out again and how to put in and take out the back plane for the hard drives. And LEDs on the front. Let's see if we can get the lid off. Ah, those sneaky bastards. They locked it. Do, 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 do. And the lid comes off. And there is nothing on the back. Oh, there is actually something. It's, there is a year on it. This is from the 10th of August 2019. So building these servers, well, it all comes down to a price point to be as compatible as possible in every scenario. So when you open up a server like this, it's not as if there's a lot in here. It's possible to expand this in multiple ways. On a standard server, there is not that much. And there is even a little more in this server than if I was just to get the first server that I was looking at because over here there is this module over here that was not on the first server that I was looking at there is also the rig controller over here and I'm pretty sure that this battery backup thing would also not be available there so there is that underneath here we get one block of memory one CPU room for another one there is a little bit here and there so this processor is the 4210. It's a 10 core CPU that runs at a normal clock frequency of 2.2 gigahertz. And it turbo boots up to about 3.2 gigahertz. 10 cores and with hyper threading that's 20 threads. And it uses 85 watts. 
it's an okay processor. It benchmarks just under 16,000 in pass mark. Um, it does a decent job. The backplane up here is 12 gigabits per second um, and the wires go back here. Before the wires went into the motherboard in the front, we can try and take this fan assembly out. Uh, there is actually five fans in here. If we install the second CPU, well, we are meant to put in an extra fan for more airflow. But until we do that, well, it's good with five fans. And I am pretty sure they have been, they have done some thorough testing on that. Uh, so we can see the power connector for the first backplane goes down here, but the second backplane is there and the third is down there. So that's interesting. These connectors are for the fans. And then there is a thingy here to make sure that the system board does not take damage. Well, and you can use this to remove the system board if you want to take it out. Awesome. There is room for the second CPU down here. Also some devices to make sure that the air does not just piss through here when there is no CPU and no RAM in here. If you install RAM and this CPU, well, you take this piece of plastic out, which is crammed into these memory slots and then air will rush through there as well. There is also a thing key here that has to be removed when you put in the second CPU. So airflow is really important in servers like these. So they do a lot of work to make it just right. Uh, this battery backup is probably not really a battery backup because it says that it's an, well, it's 80F, which is well, it's probably ferret. So this is a capacitor, some kind of maybe super caps and it's provides 13.5 volts. Yeah, super capacitors, not really batteries. So very nice. Um, then we have, we have a lot of stuff back here. And then there is this air muffler thing here. And I think this is to make sure the air is pushed down to cool that network card, that LUM card that you are putting in here. If you want any network con connectivity, well, you, you use that. There is room for two riser cards. You can put in one riser card here and one riser card here. One will go over this way and one will take up this spot. Uh, let's take that out for now. This heatsink, I'm pretty sure is the chipset that is located down there. This is of course the rate controller. There is a lot of extra connections down here uh, for different stuff. I don't see power for the for the graphics card anywhere on the motherboard anymore or the system board. And after consulting the lab of the server, this is indeed power connections for GPUs. Uh, kind of, a, I don't know if a normal eight pin connection will fit down there. That's gonna be something that we'll have to figure out along the way. We're gonna be putting in that LUM card over here and we're gonna be putting in our bootable M.2 device over there. There is a lot of other connections. Down here is a TCM connector, which is a security thing. And down here is the VGA connection that can be used on the front of the server. These two silver connections here are for putting in NVMe drives in the front of the server. So even though this is the, f I think it's the fourth smallest CPU that is available in this second generation Cascade Lake Intel Xeon scalable whatever thinky processor group well it can handle one terabyte of memory yeah that's kind of a lot and we can put in another one and we have another terabyte of memory some of these processors that are available for these servers well I was just looking at it and right out of the box I found one that could handle 4.5 terabytes of memory that means that to get up there you need 512 gigabyte sticks of memory and they are expensive this one that came with it oh it's the entry level um, this processor will only handle ram that goes up to 2400 megahertz and this ram block that is in here is actually a 2666 megahertz it's better than the processor and 16 gigabyte and produced by Samsung, I see. Very nice of them. Let's um, put in the parts that we need here. We need to put in this LOM adapter and we need to put in our boot device over here. This um, LOM here, network card, which is four 10 gigabit ports, um, is based on the Intel X 
722 something chip I believe or standard uh, that is compatible it's the same driver that is used as the 710 not that it makes much of a difference and I just realized there's a little press button there wonder what that presses and does mm. wonder why you need a little tiny button to press on a network card Meh. I can wonder that for a while I guess um, these has really stupid names but there's a really good article on Lenovo Press where you can go in and see all the features that are available in a tiny little network card like this and it's full of stuff I do even believe that it's able to do teaming so that if if we connect this to two switches let's say one of the switches dies well it will keep running on the other one and let's say that we have two of these network cards well we can't have two LAMs but two network cards well they can also work together and if one network card fails well the other one will keep going in hardware not in software uh, you can do that in software of course as well but well if you can make the hardware do it well the software will never know the difference so let's put this in okay another impossible angle um, there is a blinder here and if I just take that out we can just have a look at it it's kind of the same system as in a normal PC it's just a piece of metal like that and well some engineer has made sure that the holes are exactly the right size so that uh, only the air that is supposed to go out that way goes out that way so and then this goes in down there and I don't think there is much about it it's protected on the back with metal so that we don't short circuit anything there is a tiny finger screw there awesome and I think we just put it down there stick it out a little bit there put it in the connector and they have added a piece of blue plastic here that is meant for press putting pressure on that so it clicks and then we put in our finger screw I don't think um, I don't think there is much chance to mess this up um, well I'm sure someone can do that and it's just a LOM right here right next to this jumper hmm wonder what that does I just checked it doesn't do anything important that we have to worry about right now so then we have this boot device that we are also gonna be installing so this little thing is called the M.2 uh, enablement kit from Lenovo. Uh, they are the only one that has this um, contraption. They are the only one that does it this way. Um, and it's really easy to replace. This is a 128 gigabyte SSD. But if I wanted something bigger, bigger is available. Well, you take this little blue plastic thingy here and you pinch those two together and push it out and the stick is free you can take that out and you can kind of see there is options to do the smaller sticks as well so I only have this one uh, that I'm sure will work in here because it's a Lenovo branded one and therefore we're gonna put that right back so this is a single stick enablement kit there is also that dual stick or dual SSD enablement kit where you have a stick on both sides and there is a little bit of electronic in the middle there is that here as well but on that one it will actually do raid across those two sticks raid one on those two sticks you can also go in and configure raid zero but well there there goes your redundancy so let's pop that in it's uh, really easy it goes over here there's a tiny little connector for it so we just pop that in and I think we can do that with like that it's in it's um, gonna be able to boot on that so the last little upgrade that we're gonna be doing in this video is this power supply so let's get that out of the box and um, with just one processor in here and one block of RAM and not a whole lot well it's definitely not drawing enough power to to really be a problem to run on one power supply 
But for redundancy, you kind of do need two power supplies. So we're gonna pop them in. Um, very well wrapped for power supply. There's another piece of security paper. That we're gonna... Never mind. Open sesame. There. We have another 750 watt power supply. It's probably just like the other one. Let's check. They could be different. They are actually kind of man and they have different labels. So they might be manufactured different places. Have no idea. But we're just gonna pop both of them in. And uh, to do that, we need to remove this thinky that we had a look on at earlier. So we're gonna pop that up there and then we're gonna pop in those two power supplies. And I think this one was the original one. So let's put that in there. There. And the new power supply. And we're not gonna do this today, but here's a sneak peek of the rails. Yeah, that was enough. So the next video, we are gonna be able to move out of the living room and into the data center and mount this in the, in the rack and connect it to some network and some power. That is gonna be awesome. Again, thank you very much to my patron and also all the people that did buy a battery diesel fader. Thank you very much. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this server, I'm sure, and I'm very happy to be able to show you something that is actually still available in stores. And you can go out and buy one today for your real data center. It's not obsolete. This is the model that uses the latest version of Intel CN CPUs. They are really quick. I was amazed that this entry level server, well, it scored 16,000 in pass mark. That is a lot. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Remember to give this video a like, it helps. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.